Woo! I'm Doug Bell and this is the Hot Rod Show. We have a packed show for you tonight. We got this and that and that and this and that. We got all sorts of stuff going on. Check this out. Also on the show tonight, we go down to Picton and see a 1962 Reva. We're out and about with the Auckland Hot Rod Club Poker Run. Doug and Ken interview the organiser of the Henderson Hot Rod Show. Also, we have a Kiwi Span shed visit and Doug checks out two wheeled hot rods. Hey, check this out. No, we're not flying. Put your arm out the side. Fly, 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 fly. Up, down, up. <laughs> See, so we're not in, a, we're not in an aeroplane. We're in a Morgan three-wheeler. And um, you're not flying. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're going to start to learn a little bit about this Morgan three-wheeler. This belongs to Alan. And um, what do you think Thanks of it? We told you it was oh, going to be something crazy on the again, show tonight. Okay. So, you know, and this um, is what it is. Tell us a little, the 1933. 1933, correct. Yes. Um, <laughs> So can you tell us a little bit about Doug it? Doug likes the horn. Well, I've like had it for horn. five years. Uh, restored in Canada. <laughs> yep. And comes with a trailer. And Morgan first made these in 1909. And they were made to uh, have the same road tax as a motorbike. And that got people on the road. And if it weighed less than 500 kilograms, away you go. Well, it doesn't now. It doesn't no, now. It weighed a bit more than 500 Doug on board kilograms. Our, yep. So no doors. Uh, matchless engine out the front. Essentially a motorbike engine. And uh, three but forward get, gears in reverse. But hey, it'll be cool like at night with the heat, you know, like off the engine, w warm your feet. Oh, yeah. Oh, it warms yeah, everything, yeah. Doug. Oh, warms really? everything. Yes. Oh, wow. I wonder what is a lump in yeah. where I'm sitting. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and if you want to know what's going on, you just look down the side, yeah. you can see the suspension, you can yeah. see the engine. It's yeah. all there. I know, it's neat, eh? It's, it's yeah. like in an open, like a tea bucket and stuff. It Everything's is. exposed. You yeah. can see what's going yeah. on. No hidden secrets here. No. no. Lift the bonnet. It's all there to see. You were saying that they've um, started making them again. They have five years ago. Morgan started making them. And uh, they're a two litre, uh, a bit different to this, and they made 1400. But, but 1400. It's, it's still, it's very much, it's very similar. It's the same shape yeah. as this. Yeah. Yep. After 60 years, they started making this. Never believed it. The, wow. I, the, this, yeah. is, this is beautiful, yeah. eh? I yeah. mean, you know, uh, you know, it don't matter what sort of variation of cars you're into, yeah. a car like this is something that, that everyone can appreciate. It's pretty you special. Know? It yeah. appeals to all people, yeah. old and young. And There's a bit of a story about this, but we'll um, get out first. <laughs> Me first? Yeah, you first. You, you always go first. <laughs> that'll, uh, that'll make some room. Right, now let's see this. Yeah, here we Can go. we get a close up? <laughs> oh, look at this. Oh, this man's on. Ta da! Well, that was a lot easier than I was hoping. Uh, yes, it is too. It is too. Wow, that's. The, the, the M doesn't stand for Morgan, it stands for Matchless, by the way. Correct. So, the, the story behind this particular. Morgan, where it came from. And yeah, well, they're made in origin. England, uh, obviously. Uh, spent life in Canada. And a man there spent 10 years restoring it and shipped out to New Zealand in 2004. Wow. And at that stage, it didn't have an electric starter, so you had to crank it. And the man out here put an electric starter on. That's really good. Yeah. But uh, you can crank them. It starts really easily. So, so two, 2004, you've owned it since then? Or? Uh, 2000. Yeah, oh, I've 2000? had it five years. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. So uh, people ask me if I've restored it, but uh, that's too big a job for me. Yeah. It would never happen. That's a pretty cool little um, uh, windscreen wiper motor, isn't that it? That is. That's a vacuum one. Yeah. And uh, you have to work it by hand occasionally, but that's uh -huh. okay. Like yeah. that. It's Made by Lucas. Little... Yeah. Yep. That's it. Yeah, like they're no good for going up hills, are they? No. Coming down hills, you no, get... You get... No. <laughs> no, the car goes up hills, all right, but not yeah. with a wiper gun. The yeah. gas tank, right? Uh, yes. How, how, many, how many gallons? Uh, holds about 17 litres, about okay. four, uh, three and a half, four gallons. Yeah, and uh, under, no, that, that's the radiator? That's oil. Oil? That, that's oil. Wow. Yes. Runs a dry and sump. So the so, water's uh, there, yeah. And that's, that's actually a gauge. Yes, that's called a motor meter. we can get the camera in and have a look at that gauge. That's called a motor meter, that, and it tells you how hot the engine is. Because wow. you don't have a, um, a fan or a water pump. Yep. So you don't sit in traffic very mm. long. Oh, really? It's thermosiphon. Okay. So if it gets really hot, you're out of there. Yeah, wow. Mm. Can we um, pop the boot? Because there is a boot. Oh, well, that's not and this one is called a boot. But this is, is a boot that Doug definitely a, won't be able to get in this time, eh, Doug? Yeah, I don't think we'll be putting Doug in here today. No. Oh, well. Uh, no. So. And uh, under there is the rear wheel. 
And normally people <laughs> say, is that the spare wheel? And I say, no, that's what drives the car. Now, if, you know, like you, a, there's the chain down chain there. Drive. And yeah. um, you were, we were uh, talking to you earlier and you were saying how in 1934, was it, they brought out a four-seater? Yes, 1934, they brought out what's called the F-Type. Uh, and the F-Type, uh, the F stood for family, and that was a four-seater. So was it same width, just longer? Uh, it got a bit wider, it was a bit wider and came to the back a bit wider as well. It's all, all wooden b body frame? Yes, wooden so frame on a pipe chassis. On a pipe chassis, pipe chassis. just, just like, like yes. sort, sort of, yeah. sort of yes. pipe that you'd make, a, not the same, but you'd make a, a gate out of sort of thing, you know? Yeah, maybe a little yeah. bit stronger than that, yeah, though, yeah, but yeah. Uh, essentially a pipe. <laughs> yeah. It's not a Z chassis. Yeah, if there's, there's any gates missing in your street, there, there's <laughs> going to be a couple of Morgan yeah. three-wheelers coming on the scene, <laughs> yeah. I guess. Yeah. Okay, we're going to have a look at uh, a little bit more inside the car now. We're going to look at the dashboard and, and the aluminium. If you notice the pattern they have on there, a lot of people get that by putting a cork on the end of a drill bit and, um, and a little bit of you know a little bit of grinding paste or something, and just you know methodically going over the whole dashboard, you know, in a grid pattern and, and getting that beautiful that beautiful look there. The the, the two levers throttle. Uh, yes, that's the accelerator on the yeah. right. There's no foot accelerator, so that's it there. Yeah. Uh, one of those is spark advance. Yes. And the other one's choke. Okay. And yeah. it's important that you. Keep... <coughs> oh, that's right. It's important that you retard the spark before yeah. you start it, otherwise yeah. it can kick back. And if you're yeah. on the crank handle, that can be. Yeah, serious. you break break your thumbs. Exactly. Eh? Could, exactly. Could we start it up? Just have a little listen because oh, I think like, we, like I there think is we is a is is a whole yes, that, bunch of a, stuff going on in the big. There's the a front ritual here. for that. You got to flood the carburetor first. Okay. They're just and, a, uh, just hold the little button down, or you yeah, pump just hold the button down. No, that's all you got to do. And if we go around here and a bit of throttle, make sure it's uh, out of gear, otherwise it'll run you down. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, how about that? Amazing. So, like, matchless, you know, if, if for people who don't know, Matchless used to make motorbikes as well. So this is essentially a motorbike with three wheels. And, um, but it's just beautiful. Yeah, correct. It's, it called, it's called the trike. The trike, yeah. 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 yeah, meaning three wheels. Yeah. Wow. That, so, that, that, that's that's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Alan. Okay. Thank Thanks. you so much for you, bringing Dave. this little gem oh, on the show. Nice to be here. Thanks, Alan. Yeah. Okay. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen, at the Hot Rod Show, but we're down in Picton, and we're here with Scott. And Scott, we have a beautiful boat here with you, don't we? Yeah, it's gorgeous. It's a 1962 Riva Tritone. Yeah, and so, Scott, where was this boat built? Uh, it was built in Italy. Italy? It's um, one of 17 built in the world. Wow, 17. Yeah. Well, like, Scott, this is, I mean, I've seen pictures of, of, you know, of this style boat before in my life many times in magazines, but you never really appreciate it until you get up close, you know, no, and, and, and actually see the thing in, in real life to really appreciate it. It's very true. You see a lot of them on James Bond movies. Yeah. And, you know, in the, this hasn't actually, been on a James Bond movie? Not as far as I know. I presume no. it probably would have. But yeah. I, I don't know. So, so it's, it's got two engines. Yeah, two, two V8. So it's um, 540 horsepower. Each, each V8. Each no, V8. Each V8 is 270 horsepower. Right. So it's 540. Okay. And I noticed there on the dashboard also you, you've got two keys. So one key for each engine. One key for each engine, yes. And one control for each engine, one gear lever, yeah. and one so, so accelerator. Is, is, is a lever, lever on each side of the steering wheel there. So one's the left, one's the right. Yes, yeah. that's right. Yeah. So wow. It's quite manoeuvrable, you can turn it quite easily. So you've driven it many times? Uh, yes, I try and run it at least once a month, um, quite often more yeah. you know, two, every two weeks. Like the, the colour of the upholstery, that, that turquoise green yeah. you know, and the white um, tuck and roll, that, that is just... Uh, that is, I, 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 don't, I can't really find the words to describe this because it's, it's just so beautiful, you know. Um, that just like all the chrome, you know, extras and that that are, that are plonked on and you've got your badges here like they have on Buicks. Yeah. Um, it's just stunning, you know. It's all original, so all the poultry is original, all the really? colours are original. Um, there's nothing I can do to it without the owner's permission. Yes. Which will go back to Italy mm. where we phone them or email them. Okay. Uh, so like you got the hood on there, so it, it's is that an easy thing to, to you know the roof to put up and put down? Yeah, it's got a it's it's got a um, hood that comes up and it's actually seats fold down so you can sleep in it. It's got a toilet 
and it's got beds in the front wow. as well. A toilet with a toilet up, up front. It's a the... portable toilet that goes yeah. into it, yeah. So it's, um, wow. And it also has a sun deck which goes on the back. So it's got squabs that you, which you can use as a sun deck. This, this, this is a pretty exciting boat. Yeah, it is. It's just really special. So is this the only one in New Zealand, like with so few made, is the only one in the country? It's the only one in New Zealand that's a reaver. I think this copy is called a Chris Craft, okay. or a, a yeah. Chris Craft is a similar version of the boat. Yeah, I've heard yeah. it, yeah. Here we are watching the cars roll in at the Auckland Hot Rod Club's poker run. Ladies and gentlemen, this still is the Hot Rod Show, and here today we have Greg, and we've got Ken, and we've got Ian. Now, just to give you a little bit of information, Greg here is running a Hot Rod Show in Henderson next month. Ian here, he owns this beautiful gold-coloured pickup. So, Greg, what's... what's Thanks, on? Ken. Thanks, Doug. Um, it's the 2015 Mount Shop Rod and Custom Autorama, and it's based at the Teapai Centre in Teapai Place, Henderson, and it's... It's a show that we've got 70 cars, Ooh. 70 hot rods, street machines, muscle cars, classic uh, muscle cars. You got a rat rod we haven't got rat rods, we've got traditional hot rods. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's, that actually leads us to a good point. Nanotech uh, car cleaning specialists have sponsored the Club Spotlight, which is the Scroungers Car Club, and they've put forward five of their best traditional cars like Mike Roberts pickup and Colin Crook's 32 coupe and things like that. Well, they've got a display area going on in there as well, have yeah. they? Oh. And that's one of the display areas. What we've tried to do is it's an enthusiast type show uh, to, to reflect the best quality cars that New Zealand has to offer. So probably the granddaddy centrepiece of the show is the uh, Panhead Custom Ales uh, Builder of the Year Award, which is celebrating the work of John Reed of Rods by Reed in Tauranga. So for the first time in his career we've got a collection of Rods by Reed built cars all being displayed in one area. The concept for the show came about because I'd always wanted to do a high-end rod and custom show. My wife Rebecca, she's in remission from cancer, she wanted to do something to support the Cancer Society, you know? So there's a, there's a real feel-good thing there because there's a lot, of, a lot of people we all know that have uh, suffered that and some have been lucky and some haven't you know so she wanted to put something back to the cancer society I wanted to put on a really good rod and custom show so I pitched the idea to the mount shop they loved the idea they loved the the concept of the show they loved the concept of the charity and that kind of thing so with them on board I then went forward and started to put the show together the next ingredient was a draw card and the draw card being the rods by Reed builder of the year uh, display and once he, once JR was on board, then I thought, well, let's let's do this. We, we're serious now. So a lot of sponsors have come on board. We've got Protector Insurance, Mothers Polishers. Yes, yeah. that's these guys here, Protector and Mothers. They're our sponsors too. They're really good folk. Greg, Greg's on a beautiful yellow 32 Ford Roadster that everyone in the hot rod community knows, and um, and we'll show you a little bit about it. Greg, you were talking earlier about your, your car. Can you? run over a few things about it, like, geez, those are not bad wheels, those, eh? 
Yeah, well, those are 15 by 4.5 uh, Halibrands, and uh, I thought that was pretty integral into getting the right look of this car. You know, the car's got a lot of rake on it, and uh, it's got a 5-inch dropped Magnum I-beam axle. Okay, so that's, um, for those unknown about that, that's that part there. And the drop bit there, yeah. Yeah, and these look like Buick, are they? Buick, fin drums on early Ford hydraulic uh, backing plates. Oh, okay, so it's pretty... to what they did in the 50s through yep. the 70s, you know. And I just like the look of that. It's got the hairpin radius rods, the stainless yep. radius rods there. That's uh, quite cool. I was pretty particular about the, the style of the car and, and, and getting those ingredients to, to achieve the look, you know. And what's the story with those uh, those headlights aren't off this model of car, are they? What are they? Pretty on? close. They're are they? 33. 33 Ford commercial yep. headlights. Um, and the whole thing with this car, when you look at it front on, it's got the sc small skinny tyres, mm. low rake, and then these big headlights, you know. So it's it's got some proportions going on that are quite distinctive to give it that look, you know. Right. Yeah, we're getting on to Yo's uh, truck now, or Ian's truck, sorry. Um... And uh, we're going to talk about this truck. It's uh, it's pretty cool. We've finished with um, Greg. with Greg. Yeah, it was quite short, <laughs> but anyway, that's film work. So, yo, tell us about your truck, mate. Well, yeah, well, basically, as I said before, I've owned it for a few years. I enjoy it. Um, it's got the original a forty-seven Merc flathead engine in it, with a six-five-three blow with a six-hundred holly on the top. Um, a four-speed Muncie, um, a nine-inch Ford diff. Um, basically, that's that's it. As far as that, you know, it's pretty basic. Goes good. I enjoy driving it. Yeah, well, most hot rods are a um, a, a passion towards driving on the street. If you can get them driving right, eh, you just take them up the road. Should be sweet, eh? I mean, I have got a couple of other cars, but this is my little favourite, and um, that's you know, I enjoy it. As I keep saying, I do. Well, it's a truck. It's a truck. The interior of this, is it, it's all pretty stock in it, really. Yeah, pretty stock, just painted up. Basic interior. It's pretty cool, though, eh, you know, to see it all traditional like that, eh? You know, it's sort of a driver's vehicle. Now, we're at... Um, this young fella's garage, checking out his, uh, what we find in these garages, and here we go. Introduce yourself, sir. Oh, TV. Yeah, good day, Ken. Uh, my name's Adam, and uh, this is my shop. Oh, good, mate. And what are we about to see in your shop here, bud? Uh, it's my Nissan Skyline. It's a, um, originally a pro-import drag car, but now we run Top Street uh, with our blind alcohol Nissan V8. So let's go and let's have a look at this car. It's a pretty amazing car, and I've seen this thing run, eh, and it's... Pretty cool. You know, it gets it done, eh? Um, so you've got a Nissan 4.5 litre V8. Uh, it's quad cam. It's a production motor. Comes out in the big Nissan luxury cars. Oh, OK. And, um, yeah, they, they used to be quite common, but they're getting thinner on the ground these days. How many litres is that uh, this thing here taken out to now? Uh, this one's 4.5. Um, we have another motor, too, and that's a 5.4 litre. And uh, the blower on the top of it? It's a uh, 1471 Littlefield. So uh, most of this is stuff being built in-house, is it? Uh, pretty much, mate, yeah. Like, pretty much anything we could build, we did. Primarily to save money, and we could just... Because of what it is, you can't buy stuff off the shelf for the drag racing application. So we just had to make it. For those that sort of the tricky guys that want to know all the stuff, eh, is it overdriven or underdriven? Or? Uh, it's 20% underdriven at the moment, and at that stage, we're about 25 pounds of boost. Well, do you want to check us out, uh, the interior of this? Yeah. A lot of people would be interested in checking this out. Well, that's a handy way to work on cars. Just rip the door off, should be right. Um, so we just got a two-speed power glide, so just fast and faster. And um, so, yeah, we've got obviously the gear shifter, and we have a, a manual brake for the rear calipers only to help in staging the car so you don't roll through the beams. And that's our uh, line lock control for the trans for the launching. People seem to think that it's an expensive sport, but it's not really, is it? Once you've got the basics, it's sort of uh, just um, mucking around, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's like any sport. The faster you want to go, the more money it costs. But the drag racing does have a lot of really good entry-level classes, especially with the Drag Wars series on the Friday nights. I mean, that's how I started racing my Capri. And we just got to a point where we wanted to go faster, so we designed and built this. Okay, so how long has it taken you to build? 
It was about a three-year project to get it all set and done. It started off as a pile of chrome oily tribune on the floor, and my dad, Frank, designed and sort of constructed the whole car, essentially. We built all the body ourselves in-house. and. Thanks for the uh, the tour of your garage and uh, car, eh? It's pretty good. I reckon a lot of people will look at this thing and uh, follow you this coming season, and good luck with that, eh? Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Ken. Cheers. Okay, thanks. <laughs> sent our own bearded bikey over to check out Auckland Harley-Davidson to talk to Greg Pratt to find out what they do. Well, uh, this, is, uh, this is our workshop. This is where most of the action happens for, uh, in terms of the, the hotting up of bikes, the repairs of bikes, uh, the, the servicing, your day-to-day behind-the-scene magic that, uh, that really get all our bikes onto the showroom floor. Uh, these are the guys that that tune our drag bikes to um, to, to get through to the, to, to the finals and, and take home some trophies. Uh, nobody does it better than these guys. They're highly trained and uh, and very passionate about about Harley Davidson um, and all motorcycles in general. Really, as you can see, we, we uh, the boys work on anything from um, imported hardtails, um, homemade choppers, uh, your genuine Harleys that uh, was pulled down to do a lot of custom work to. To just your, your simple oil change, uh, keeping people rolling on the road doing the K's they want to do. So, yeah, it's a, it's a, a really a one-stop shop. There's nothing that we can't do. Uh, this is the accessories, the accessories department. Uh, everything that you could possibly imagine is uh, is in here, or we can get it for you. Uh, a lot of women's apparel. The, the woman rider section is uh, forever growing. It's the fastest growing side of our uh, of our shop. And yeah, leather jackets, boots. Uh, cigarette lighters, beer cups, anything. We do everything in here. Hey Doug. Hey Braden, how you doing? Good. What you got there? Brazilian wax. Brazilian wax? Not that type of wax, read the label. Oh. Oh, Mother's California Gold Ultimate Pure Brazilian Carnival Wax. What does it do? Well, it doesn't take the hair off your car, so I guess it's got to polish your car. Hey ladies and gentlemen, well a car like this can't come from anywhere else but West Auckland. So, I'm just going to hand you over to Braden and Doran now and they'll tell you all the technical details of this monster that's in here. Hey Doran, thanks for coming. Hey Braden, here you go. Good. Um, So you've brought your Plymouth Barracuda? Yes. Along? Yep. And uh, 496? 496, it's a 440 stroked with a hemi-crank in it, Um, Indy heads. Yep. And what's your... um, You've got a bit of a drag racing background. Yep. Tell yep, us a bit about yep. that. Full on drag racing. I've uh, been doing it for five years now. Uh, last year, we done a f- our first full season and we won the National Series and the Trek Series. And this year, we've came second in both because we blew our motor up, but we're still very happy. <laughs> yep. So, what's the fastest time you've done? Uh, 9 7 at 138 mile an hour. Yep. That is quick. That's great. Yep. So, if we go around, we can see the, um, have a look at the interior and. Yes. Can give our viewers a bit of a rundown on how everything works, Darren. Not a problem. Okay, um, basically you have the instrument panel there, that's for turning everything on, like your trans brake, uh, your fans, your fuel pump, um, your rev counter, very important, and your gauges and steering wheel, and of course your accelerator pedal, that's all you need. <laughs> awesome. Yep. awesome. Why, why is the steering wheel off at the moment? Because so uh, steal it. I need to lose some weight. You need to lose some weight. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I tell you, what, if you if you make a TV show, you'll get so nervous you won't eat and you'll lose some weight. <laughs> so you, what you were telling me something about the rear tyres here before? Yeah, it's uh, a uh, the, the, the car's from Kentucky. Um, it was a 10.5 Outlaw car. Um, big cars on small tyres is the in thing to do at the moment. It's just starting to take off in New Zealand. So yep. we're going to have a go. How long have you um, owned the Barracuda for? Uh, five years now. Oh, yeah, yep. so it's been in your whole drag racing career? Yep, yep. Awesome. It's uh, been a bit of evolution for us. Yep. And, yeah, it's been awesome. Awesome. Yep. So this so this yep. sticker here is for the... That's for the Miri Miri Trek Series, yep. uh, last year's. And, um, obviously number one in that. Number one, yes. And then we got yes. the big one at the back. Yep. Which is for the NZ National Series. That's right. And of course, we've got uh, the Kendall Law sign there who proudly sponsor us and uh, oh, awesome. keep, it all, keep it all going really good. Keep the good. motor going? Yes. 
Cool. Yes. Can't go very far without oil, eh? Exactly. Yep. Doug can. Well, <laughs> that's sweet, man. Awesome. I've mean, seen this at the drags many times, eh? It just, you, you do wheel stands in that. You just do wheel stands, yep. What, what, yep. What's the highest you've, you've, has anyone ever told you that? How high, you know? Um, the highest has probably been close to a metre. Yeah, yep. wow. What, yeah. what, what's it like? Do, 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 to tell you the truth, you don't notice it. Yeah? No. It's cause, because like it's all in a few seconds it's anyway, you're, you're at the end. Yes. What, have, have you been able to, to raise it up, you know, like when you, when you go through the next gear, lift it up again? No, <coughs> not yet. <laughs> not no. yet. We'd like to. <coughs> <coughs> there's a, um, like in, in August, there's the, like a, an event coming up called Mother's Chrome down at Hampton Downs there. That they've, they've got a, a power skid, you know. Yes. We, uh, you, man, it'd be good to take this, put oh, some street tires on that definitely. and go in this. Yep. We've actually yeah. got a good, yep. we're actually getting a clip there of you doing a burnout that's yes. going to be yep. showing on the yeah. segment. And so the 496 is producing how much is this? Uh, Puts about 800. Yep. And a pull a stump out. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's awesome. It's a great car. It's um, served us really well. Uh, Eric from West Auckland, great guy, real helpful. That's and Haggis. Yes, that's him. <laughs> that's him. Yes. No, he's awesome. Uh, highly recommend him to any Mopar fans out there. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah he, he knows what he's doing, eh? Yes, he does. Top advice. Yeah. So how long have you had this particular motor for? Because you said it got rebuilt. Yes, so we bought, we bought a motor in from the States, and uh, my first meeting, I bent eight valves. Um, we pulled it apart and found out it was basically a pile of parts. So it was a good lesson for anyone out there that buys a crate motor. You're buying parts, you're not yep. buying a going concern. Yep. And, and um, um, So we, we got it rebuilt by Eric and the boys, and they found heaps of things wrong yep. and uh, sorted out. The, the carburetors, like what, what size? There are 650s on 850 plates. Okay. Uh, they've got machine spindles for more flow. How, 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 much, how much gas would you go through in, in a quarter mile? Do you, do you have any idea? Yeah, about six and a half litres. Six and a half litres yes. in a quarter of a mile, but yeah. that, that's starting up and then, and then you know, but that's yeah. That's doing your skid. The yeah. skid, the whole thing. Yeah. But there's that, still quite a bit of gas going through there, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, wow, and because and like you, you, it's not just pump gas that you're using. No, we're yeah. using Ed gas, which is 104 yeah. plus. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. I yeah. almost get that out of my still. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Very I good. think. Yeah. 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 Um, next, uh, next season, we're going to put a bigger motor in it. What are you putting? Uh, we're putting a, a Keith Black Hemi in there. Ooh, yeah, yeah. So Keith Black, that, that's, yeah. A, that's a name that goes back quite a few years. Yes. Are you importing the motor? or? I've got the motor at home, it's in my lounge at the moment. Oh, so okay. I sit there every night looking at it. Do, do you get excited looking at it? Oh, it's better than TV. Yeah, yeah. I would be, <laughs> eh? Yeah. yeah, wow. I used to have my, um, my flathead sitting in the lounge for quite some time, and it's really cool having an engine sitting there. It is. Yes. Yeah. Well, before Doran um, takes his car off the set, we've got to have him start it up here because we want everyone to to appreciate the vibes and the sound that come from this. Is, this is just this is just pure. <laughs> Men and women will understand that. It's just a whole lot of whole lot of going on. It's pretty. Doran, can, can you no excite problems. the heck out of us, please? Yep, can do that. Thanks. <laughs> I guess you put the steering wheel on just in just case. Just in case. Off, just right? in yeah. case. It'll be safe. <laughs> Okay, well, here's the end of the show, ladies and gentlemen. We told you we we're going to have a lot of interesting stuff in the show tonight, and we certainly have had a lot of interesting stuff. Well, Alan, it's time to say goodbye to you, and thank you for bringing your Morgan three-wheeler. And here's a little oh. bottle of Mother's Polish to, to get it. You, it's pretty hard to get this thing any more shiny than what it is. That'll be very useful. Yeah. Thank you for that. Brayden. And thanks, Doran and Graham. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Keep the car nice and clean. And we'll see you next week. Start your engines! <laughs>